like LeBron, oh, or like Bronzo. Oh, I'm a baller, yeah, shot caller, yeah. They love me, you can't touch me, nah, can't trust me. I'm too lucky. Look at me, look at you, what you see, what you do, baby, please think it through. Drink it up, enjoy the view. MVP, got my crew, Nike on my shoes, my be sipping blues, slightly feeling loose. If I want it, then I have it. Boom, 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 boom. This is Jared and I'm back. Hey guys, you know what time it is. It is the Warriors Quest show time. All right, if you're new to the show, every week I get an opportunity to spotlight a chronic disease warrior. And on this show, all right, we give somebody the spotlight to share their journey along their way in regards to what they've experienced, all right? And many, many times, we are able to give hope. We're able to make sure that we're giving inspiration and encouragement to people, all right? But I can't do that alone. I need your help, all right? So please smash that share button. Don't be stingy. All right, please smash that share button. Smash it like you're the Incredible Hulk, all right? Make it go into little pieces if you have to. All right, please smash it, and let's get this party started. You know how we do, all right? Let's make some noise, all right? Because we are going to get this party started, all right? Today, I have got a kidney warrior as a guest. Robert Ivy, he has he has triumphed with kidney transplant, and since his kidney transplant, he has been inspired and he has been on a mission. Quite literally, he reminds me of myself and that he and I both feel as though we're called that we have a calling to help people, and he feels like it is his calling and that God has has inspired him to do more advocacy. So I am so excited to introduce you to this kidney warrior, Robert Ivy. All right, everybody, give a very warm Warriors Quest show welcome, all right, for Robert Ivy in the house. Here we go. VIP with my intro. Ba -ba 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 Boom. Oh, man, I'm doing great. Man, uh, spring has sprung here where I live in Utah. You know, we've got we've got good warm weather. Um, you know, we've had some showers every now and then, too, but that's spring, right? Man, it's kind of cool down here in Mississippi today. All right, all right. All yes. right, well, man, I, I'm, I'm really, really excited to get this going, Robert, because, man, I, I'm... You know, I have met so many good people, uh, inspiring people on TikTok recently, right. and I'm glad I glad I found what you're doing. Um, you know, you've you've got such a such a good um, how should I put this? Uh, you seem so genuine. You know, very Thank sincere. You. Thank you. Yes, right. and I appreciate it. You're welcome, and, and that's what drew me to you is that. You know, there are people out there that try to get attention. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. Try to try to to <laughs> you know get, draw the attention all on on themselves because they they right. want the spotlight. Okay. And you're very genuine and sincere, and I, I really Thank like you. that. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, Jim. Now you're welcome. 
So, you know, by the way, I want to give a special shout out to some people that are watching right now. We've got Uncle Jim. I want to say thank How's you. Welcome going back Jim? Yeah. yeah, welcome, 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 Uncle Jim. Um, Shane Blanchard, thanks for tuning in and and thank you wholeheartedly for the share. Sharing is caring. And you're showing, you're caring by sharing. <laughs> and uh, Chris, right. lovely Chris is watching. I hope you're doing well, Chris. And uh, Tamika, my sister from a different mister. What is going on, Tamika? Thank you so much for tuning in, Tamika. We have got a great guest right here. Um, and whoever is watching right now, please all right, please share this so that we can get this information out to as many people as possible. So, uh, Robert, I've, I've just shared just a little bit, uh, but not very much. And so what I'd like to do is I would like to uh, explain that, again, I've met you on TikTok. And right. when I met you on TikTok, what I saw, like many people do, some of your short videos and right. um, TikTok uh, again is so powerful that way because you can get a tidbit and get an information quickly. And right. you, the video that caught my attention is you're stating that sometimes you'll get the call as a kidney, tr tr you know, kidney disease patient, and right. you're you get excited because it's you feel as though this is the moment you're getting a transplant right. and sometimes it isn't the case because some some of the things don't always go smoothly right they don't always right. go the right. way you want um right. that's the 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 video that i first saw and that caught my attention because you know um it's good to kind of bring that op out in the open and talk about it right. because mm -hmm. um it's anyway that was my first uh, introduction to you. And then I started, like a lot of us do, when we like one video, we we go and we watch more of them. That's what I did. And I got right. a little right. taste of what you do. But I've gotten already a little bit, right? And I know a little bit about right. you. But what I'd like to do is, if I may, just kind of put you solo for a moment. And let's have our Warriors Quest show followers get to know you. Um, what I'd like to do is have you introduce yourself and your journey. Um, you can start wherever you want. You can start from when you were just a wee lad, or you can start from when maybe, uh, you give your journey of, of maybe, um, you know, six years ago, seven years ago, it's kind of up to you. We just kind of, you know, when I, you and I talked before offline, I, right. I don't really follow the script because I, I feel like it's just kind of. You know, it's better and more comfortable just to talk, right? Right, right. All right. So I'm going to put you solo, but no pressure. We're just going to talk. I'll still be here. I'll okay. just put your screen up front. And okay. let's, uh, it, you know, just kind of introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about your background. You know, uh, every hero has his origin story. Even Bruce Wayne and, and Batman started somewhere, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right, correct. All right, so tell us, a, tell our followers a little bit about your background and where this all started. Well, my name is Robert Ivey. I'm from Oxford, Mississippi. And I, my journey really started when I was young. You know, my mom, she had, she was on dialysis for 35 years. And the journey, it was pretty tough back then. You know, uh, growing up, seeing your mom, going back and forth to the dialysis machine and um, three days a week being sick when she get off and still have to take care of her family. And according to my father and my sister, I was too young to remember, they said that I, my mother used to uh, take us to the doctor to get us checked out because she want to make sure that we don't, we don't we don't have the same thing that that she had which was kidney disease okay so, with that being said uh my journey started back when i was young but i i didn't understand back then but i understand now all right so it sounds like you know your journey starts kind of with your your mother because she had kidney disease as well right correct correct 
Okay. And, uh, you know, it we didn't have all bad time, but, you know, just seeing her, you know, sick majority of the time. And sometimes we, um, she have a close call of dying, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when she get out dialysis, she still, you know, she be tired and stuff, but she still make room to take her, her kids and her father, wow. which our grandfather, he was staying with us too. Okay, and he so, was staying with you too. Wow. Uh huh. She was taking care of her father too. So, you know, wow. it, it was it was tough. You know, seeing our mother sick like that. But sure. It wasn't all bad time. We had some good times too. Well, uh, your your mom sounds like a real sweet woman. I mean, like she. It sounds like she really tried to endure, you know, her trial because she had, you know, you and other people that she loved, and you know. Uh, how uh, did she ever kind of, uh, you know, purposely or not, did you ever see, um, did it ever show on her that, you know, that she maybe uh, was having a bad day or did she show emotionally that maybe it was difficult for her? Yes. You know, she get off um, running three or four hours, uh, three days a week. It, it took a toll on her, but like I said, she come home and, and she wasn't feeling too well, but she used to try to take care of family, you know. Okay. So I think that I think that's where I get my toughness from, you know. But she did show. I bet you did a lot of. She did show a lot of emotion, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting on Dallas, you know, all the many years, and you know, otherwise, you know, she just said she was tired. But of course, you know, if we're not going through it, we don't understand what she's feeling. You know. You know, I wanna. I want to um, stop there for a moment. Because what you said actually uh, holds a lot of truth. I think that's a very true statement is that um, I I have just a, a very sliver of an understanding, but I can't say with 100% accuracy that I get it because I've right. not been on dialysis. Uh, I've not had chronic fatigue and all these other things that come along with it. Uh, I've had a little bit of a lens because I've interviewed so many people who, like yourself, have battled through right. it. But right. when you haven't actually been through it and you've not been in the trenches, so to speak, uh, it is difficult to totally understand. And um, with how, uh, when she was still alive, did, how far... Um, when was it that you found out that you were your kidneys were failing was it after she passed away or was there still a timeline where you both you know had kidney disease and and she was still alive where that where's that timeline well yes yeah, she was still living i say that i found out around about 98 you know i um i had the gout and I was going back and forth to the doctor. Okay. And I got a call and I got a call one day uh, telling me that I need to see my primary care doctor because you know something going on with my kidneys. So yeah, she was still living. She died in 2007, seven, and that was around 98, 99 when I found out I had kidney disease. Okay. Okay. So there is it did overlap then. Okay. Right, right. All right. And so the, how uh, there must have been some sort of a, a very good bond then because you probably started to have a greater empathy, you know, for what she would had gone through, you know, because your kidney started to fail as well. And, and so and now did that help you kind of bond or did you have even a greater bond than you had before because you started to have maybe a, a, a greater understanding of how difficult it may have been for her for so long? Well, my process was was very slow, okay, and and I was, re I was very emotional because, you know, as as we were growing up and we saw what she was going through, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't want to go through that. When I say we, I mean my sister. Now, okay, she found okay. out she she was the same way. She went to a doctor because of her leg, and they found out that her kidney was gone, and she had to start dialysis. 
immediately. So, wow. So, so let's. I don't mean to interject. I apologize. I don't no, mean to be rude. That's okay. That, that's okay. So, not only did your mom have kidney disease uh, and had to be on dialysis, but how many of her children? How many of you? You know, how many of your siblings? How many in your family actually struggled with the kidney failure as well? Well, it just it's just two. My, my sister and myself. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She just had um, two. Mm-hmm. And like I said, my sister, she was, she was very emotional too because, like I said, growing up watching our mom being sick, going back and forth to the doctors, you know, get on dialysis, you know, that already had took a toll on us. Right. Already. I can and imagine. Now, and now it looked like we repeating the same thing. So mm-hmm. it was kind of. It was kind of tough, but like I said, mine was a slow process over the years. But my sister, she uh, they told her that night that she needs to start dialysis immediately. Wow! Right. Wow! That must have been quite a shock for her then. Immediately. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. She did. She did dialysis for um, a minute, and then she did uh-huh. marry to Neil at home. Okay, the PD. Until she, until she read it, until she received a kidney. Okay. Well, praise God that she's uh, had a kidney transplant as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it was it was kind of tough on me, you know. Um, I don't advise nobody to skip doctor's appointment, but no, like I said, yeah, I I I, I was banking on that, you know, I, uh, God was gonna heal my original kidney. But you know, my plans are not his plans. Right. But he did bless me. He did bless me to um get a transplant before getting on dialysis. Amen to that. Uh that that was actually another question I was gonna have is is uh did you have to go on dialysis? So it sounds like uh you were blessed with a, a, a kidney transplant before dialysis. Was it from a, a deceased donor angel or was it from a living donor? A deceased. Okay. All right. 13 year old young man. Oh, wow. Well, God bless, God bless this angel, you know, that was only 13 because God right. must have had uh, different plans for him up in heaven. If, if his, right. Correct. You know what I mean? If he was called to, Correct. to come up at that young age. Wow. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But through, through my journey, you know, I changed doctors and, you know, I got, emotional and didn't want to go to a doctor. I don't advise nobody to do that, you know, because I really didn't want to get on dialysis. And that's, okay. Okay. And that's, what, and that's my doctor. They was talking about um, getting on dialysis. And, and even when they put me on the kidney transplant list, like I see so many people, they, they can't wait to get a, a kidney. But in my case, my mind was just stuck on God blessing me uh healing my kidney that i was born with mm-hmm. so trying to save that yeah so i was I, even though i received a, a call at first because i went twice the first time i i was selfish because you know in my mind i wanted god to hear me uh my kidney i was born with right but like i said my plans are not here plans so I'm, I'm glad he did what he did yeah, it sometimes we have to be we he has to humble us and remind us, right? <laughs> correct. Correct. <Yeah>. Correct. <laughs> so, um after, you know, after your transplant, um what you know, what kind of transformation how did this transformation happen that um you seem like a very caring person anyway, so don't get me wrong. Um Right, but, right, right how did this transformation happen where you decided that that you wanted to to become an advocate and and take your knowledge and, and stuff and, and try to help other people well as soon as i had my uh, received my kidney i was talking to my wife when i was in the hospital okay and i and i was talking about kidney disease and that was something that I couldn't talk about before I had my transplant. You know, I couldn't uh, watch it on TV 
Okay. I didn't want to hear nothing about, about kidney disease. Mm-hmm. And at first, when it came to mind, I was talking about having a, a kidney walk. Okay. And at first, I thought it was just something that that just popped up in my head. And But I wasn't, I was just talking about it. It wasn't no action. All right. You know, and I was telling people my plan, but it still was no action. Okay. So they, so but I believe I really believe that it was it was God that led me this way to give back. Like I said, when I was when I was young, I really believe now that he was preparing me back then with my mom to get familiar with kidney disease and dialysis and things like that. So he, he put it on my heart. My wife and I we got started and we've been doing we've been doing great. That's awesome. That is awesome. You know, I, 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 um, I wouldn't doubt that that's something that may have happened though, Robert, honestly, is that, um, sometimes, you know, it, we don't quite understand, you know, all of what God has in plan for us. Right. And right, right, right. <laughs> sometimes, you know, um, it's kind of a, a, you know, a, it's not a con, but sometimes it's the long game, right? Where right. he's planning things out um, to prepare us. And I, you know, some of the things that my dad went through, I think, helped me right. prepare for what I'm going through. And so, right. um, although it must have been, I can only imagine, um, very difficult to see you go th- to see your mom go through her trial. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I I, I got to think that it, it, it must have... Uh, must have helped you in some way and i think that god must have had a plan and if it if it in any way helped you then you know who knows maybe back in heaven before we all came to this earth maybe she said hey listen i'll do this so that he can learn from me right you know right. we don't know right right yeah right right, right. but like i said i really believe that he prepared me for this and when you was talking about that video that i did about um mm-hmm. I, you know, Rena, I did that video. I, a lot of people hit me up. Uh, I see them, and, and they said they can't wait to receive a kidney. And I know people that have been by full time, and it wasn't a match. Right, right. So I just wanted to get them heads up, you know, before they, they get their call and, you know, go down there and be shocked when they say it's not a match. Yeah, be prepared so, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to prepare them, so that's yeah. why. That's why. That's why I did that video. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, purposeful positivity. Thank you. Where does the kidney walk take place? She's or he or she is asking. Well, like I said, I'm from Oxford, Mississippi, and we have it every year. Well, we hadn't had it in a couple of years since the COVID, mm-hmm. but we have we have it at the Boys and Girls Club here in Oxford. So and we get, the, uh-huh. and that's you and, and your wife kind of help do this. You, you plan it together or how does that all work? We plan together. We got a, a couple board members. Okay. Us, but it started out, uh, me and her was doing that first. So okay. We got a, a couple, couple of board members to help us out. Awesome. It sounds like you've got a nice partner then if she's, you know, your partner in crime is helping you, you know, do these things. And she must have a big heart as well. Yes, because, you know, I, I realized that after my kidney transplant, I was able to go back and forth to um, Jackson, Mississippi. And I was able to afford my medication. So okay. a lot of people are not fortunate. You know, they have a problem going back and forth to a doctor, you know, gas money, getting a medication, or what have you. So we donate the money back to the kidney dialysis here in Oxford okay. where my mother, where my mother right. was going before she passed. I think that's great. I, You know, I, anybody else who's watching, please hear this. Is that This is so inspiring, Robert. Um, you know, you. Uh, to it is. And I think that we need to always stop and celebrate the victories. You know, um, so many things happen um, in 
on a daily basis where we hear of all these bad things going on, right? I mean, correct. They should they should really change the name of the news to just bad news, right? When we're watching bad TV, news, but news. yeah, I just and, uh, watching sometimes, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. and and right now I want to celebrate the victory. So yeah, and there we go. Thank you. So this is a she is a kidney warrior that I've had on the Warriors Quest show, and she is a, a kidney transplant recipient now. And so thank you for watching. Thank you for, um, I, I should have known by the name of, uh, of your YouTube handle because uh, you've written a book. She's also an author anyway. Okay. Um, so we've got, um, we've got some great people watching as well. And I want to thank, I want to thank, uh, James for, for watching. Um, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, uh, I would be extremely embarrassed not to mention him. I want to give a shout out to James from dad vice TV. Good evening. So. I want to stop for a moment and celebrate this because to think that what you've gone through, that it is, you know, by no, no stretch of the imagination, an easy thing for anybody. And yes, your mom had it and you saw her go through it. And that may have given you a little bit of a, you know, an idea of what may happen, but right. to go through it on your own, was not easy. Even you yourself said that you had times where you did some things that in retrospect may not have been the best thing, you know, and, right, right. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, and you were frustrated with your doctor, so on and so forth, but to go through the chronic fatigue, to go through maybe, you know, um, anemia or, you know, um, sleep, you know, if you had sleep problems, you know, if you uh, insomnia, right? I mean, all sorts of things that that kidney disease patients go through. This is not an easy thing, and right. to take that and then decide, God now wants me to move forward and help people. This is a victory on so many levels, and I want to give you props. It's very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. It, not everybody does that. Not everybody does that. You know, I, I have, I, I know of some other people, but not everybody does Jonathan trailer. Um, I've got Shane Blanchard, um, and I've got some other people that, that I know personally in the kidney disease community. Um, right. in fact, even James, um, is a kidney warrior himself from dad vice TV. Um, and he adv he brings so much to the table as well, but not everybody does this. And so I want to celebrate this. So anybody who's watching, please, you know, give him some encouragement and say thank you for what this guy does because he is helping people and, and is inspiring. Look at this. I'm inspired. You, thank you, Nina. Thank Look at you, that. Nina. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing that I did. I, I went back after um, I had a kidney transplant and I apologized to my nursing doctors because okay you know i thought that they, they, were just, they were just trying to get me to get on dialysis you know and they were really trying to help me but i was i was blind you know i didn't want to face the fact that i was sick because mm -hmm. my doctor he he kept telling me i was sick and i was telling him that i didn't feel sick but i didn't know anything about the side of disease at the time okay you know i didn't have no symptoms no side effect at first. I right. Didn't know, and it, I didn't know anything about the kidney disease being a side disease. You might not have any symptoms. Okay. Okay. And he was telling me that I was I was sick, but you know I was I was just banging on. I didn't have no symptoms or side effects. Sure. But I thought I thought I was doing pretty good, but I had to have my kidney transplant. I realized that, and I told my wife that I was a very sick man, like he said I was. Mm hmm. Well, and what we could talk about right now is because, you know, kidney disease is, yes, very much called the silent killer because it can creep up on you. Many I've interviewed many people. In fact, I can't count how many people I've interviewed that have said that their introduction to kidney disease was in the emergency room and that mm -hmm. they had, much like your sister, had to have right. dialysis immediately. And, right, and that right. was their introduction, but they had no other clue before then. And so that, you know, so I, I get it. I mean, for 
you know, you probably felt well, right? Relatively, <laughs> right? right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was leaning on, hey, dog, I feel good, you know, but, but uh -huh. he was telling me the truth. But I went <laughs> back and apologized because they was in my corner the whole time. Good, good. All right. But I just didn't want to face the fact of what I was going through. Mm hmm. That's sometimes it is, you know, the, the truth uh, isn't always easy to hear, you know, and how how difficult was it to be to show humility and and, and go, you know, talk to him after you felt like you needed to? Was that difficult or was that, you know, did you feel better afterwards? How did that go? Well, um, when I visit him after, you know, visiting with my uh, transplant doctor in, in Jackson. You know, I knew it had to be done and they didn't know the way I was feeling, but I did, you know, and I, like I said, I felt that they were just trying to throw me on them. So I let them know that it, it was difficult, you know, saying, but I, if I felt much better afterwards when I, when I got out and I thanked them. Well, that says a lot about your character that you did that, um, you know, um, you know, to man, to be a, a man and say, listen, I, I've done something that I'm not proud of, or I acted in a way that I'm not proud of, that, and to go, you know, apologize. That says a lot about your character, Robert. Yeah, because I was, um, the nurse, she was a family friend, and she was nursing my mom down there at the dialysis, and she called. Mm -hmm. and, and we had that relationship where she can call and say, he really trying to help you. You need to come back to a doctor. Because I was skipping appointments, Scott. I, I really didn't want to hear nothing about you. Skip some, okay. My, right. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I learned something in making these videos. You know, a lot of times we can get caught up in the likes. And over the years, I might put out one or two videos because I was caught up in the likes and, and people wouldn't like what I was saying. But I realized that it's not about me. You know, it's about helping. So that's why mm -hmm. I put my video, video, videos out now to help someone. And I know somebody watching, and I know somebody need. They might not hit the like button, but they'll watch. So I had to get that out of my head that you know it's not about me. No, yeah, very well said. Um, you know, and I, <sighs> I believe that, you know, sending information out there like we are right now, um, it can be such a powerful message. In fact, uh, doing this, um, we can right now inspire people. Your your message could be inspiring. And, you know, you, you never know. And you're it's so true. And even James right here from Dad Vice TV is saying there are always people watching the videos and finding hope. And he's right. And, right. you know. Our video right now that we're putting out here and creating uh, a message of hope, somebody may watch this, you know, 12 months from a year from now and see my goofy right. mug and laugh and, and then see your message and be inspired, you know, and then uh, you, you, they may be uplifted and people that are watching today may be uplifted and it's somebody may have had a bad day and then someone clicks the yeah. share button and all of a sudden shares it with somebody who's having a bad day at dialysis and gets inspired right. by your story. It, right, right. It's it's a powerful thing. And it can be done, you know, um, as easy as just sharing this message. Uh, look at, we, let's read this, uh, Robert. That's seriously amazing what you're doing for others. I love hearing your story. You are awesome. All right. Thank you, Nina. Look Thank at you, that. Nina. I yeah. appreciate that. So I'm going to, I'm going to put your TikTok handle out here again, um, on the screen here. So for anybody who is uh, trying to, to build a, either a TikTok following or just see his TikTok videos, you can find him at six, six, two Robert, and you can find him on TikTok. Um, he's got, he gives really good information, tidbits, um, and you can uh, see what he's doing and he's creating hope. He's creating messages for people who are on dialysis as well as people who are kidney transplant recipients. So this person right here from Mississippi, all right, is a very good person. And I am, I'm, I'm very much 
a proponent of spotlighting good people. And I'm a little giddy that I'm doing it today because I love to get good messages out there. And you are a good message. Thank you. Thank you. And my kidney foundation that that my wife and I run is RJI Kidney Awareness Foundation. All right, here we go. I'm and, putting it up right now. And the, it was named in honor of my late mother. The initials are RJI, Roberta, Joanna mm -hmm. Ivy. Yes, we named it Foundation on a, uh, my late mother. Oh, that is excellent. So it's in respect and in a tribute to her legacy and her name. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. 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 And, and <laughs> that, like is, said, that I, is so I, honorable. I like, that is honorable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to encourage everybody, but you know, when it comes to when it comes to men, you know, it's it's difficult for us to go to the doctor. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's hard for us to get a checkup. You know, we want to be a uh, tough and macho. Tough as nails. So, yeah, yeah. So we we don't like going to a doctor, but you know, I think sometimes we can get uh, the doctor can catch things that maybe catch it much earlier if we keep a check on our um, kidneys or anything mm -hmm. going on with us. Just get a blood test and maybe they can catch some before it right. get worse, you know. If you something's know, going on, they, they can catch it in time, you know. Right. And, and many of us just don't know. And um, you mentioned something uh, on your on your website um, and it's something we try to talk about more and more and it's just facts it has um it statistically people of color are are more at risk with kidney disease right. and so um i think it i think it uh, is something we can talk about that uh although it doesn't discriminate and you know no, any color no, it just it just fits. any color but the facts are people of color are a little bit more at risk and so um, let's please try to share this message with as many people as possible because man, what Robert's saying, you never know, you know, maybe, maybe you, you know, are in relatively good shape, you know, but maybe your high blood pressure, uh, because of your genes, maybe you've got high blood pressure because of your genes and you just don't know that your high blood pressure goes up and you haven't had a doctor's visit in a while and all of a sudden your kidneys are, are are somewhat failing and maybe you're in stage three and you had no idea you know so well, how important well, you know, that, is it that's what happened to me yeah you know uh, there you go my, my church family some of my closest friend they didn't know mm -hmm. until i had a kidney transplant you know because a lot of time you know i was telling people and they feel sorry for me and i, I was already down and i didn't want anybody to feel sorry for me so you know a lot of people didn't find out until after my kidney transplant mm -hmm. so you don't have to they look didn't like even know until through. afterwards what you're saying right right you don't have to look like what you're going through and i didn't yeah. like what i was going through <laughs> amen to that even uh, nina who has lupus nina jensen um and she's from my lovely state utah um nina has lupus and she she knows uh, very well, and many other people who are maybe watching right now, please comment, all right? Drop a comment if you yourself are very, very tired of hearing you don't look sick. Because I know you don't like it. I know it because it's, <laughs> right, right. it's infuriating for many people that I've already interviewed, whether they have lupus or kidney disease or something else or some sort of other chronic illness. It is not, all right? It is not a good thing to say you don't look sick. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell me how infuriating that must have been for you and other people. If you have had that happen, drop a comment. <laughs> you know, around here, around the small town that I'm from, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, we hear a lot about, we heard a lot about cancer. You know, but... Mm -hmm. Kidney disease, we didn't very little. We didn't hit very little, very little. It needs to get more plug. It needs. To, we need to have more awareness, and 
which uh, which is why you and I and and other people are trying to to bring more awareness because you're right we we need to make sure that people are getting checked we need to make sure that they're getting high blood pressure diabetes checked and that we're trying to build more awareness about what are better foods to eat so that they're not increasing diabetes or you know type 2 or or you know if they do find out they have high blood pressure watch your sodium and other things right right and and not for everybody but if most of them run um, very high after you have a kidney transplant dealing with your medications, mm -hmm. you know, well I said. A of, um, yeah, depression, anxiety, and I asked my doctor what was going on with me. He, not everybody, but a lot of people that I didn't talk to after having a kidney transplant, you know, anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, you know, and when I was growing up, and people don't, they don't like to talk about it. When I was growing up, it would consider crazy but it's, it's not it's not no uh I depression it, mm -hmm. right it's real mm -hmm. it's real and, and so i try to encourage uh people to you know talk to someone about yes it, you know yes instead of holding it in yes open it up open it up because we need more talk about that more talk it's okay about to it. talk about it it's yeah okay it is okay it. to talk about it all right i want to thank uh I want to thank, uh, I want to give gratitude and, and give a shout out to, to Takia Howard. Um, you deal with a lot of emotions. You're right. There are so many, it's a comp, it's complex and mm -hmm. so many things are going, you know, going through your, your brain is, it's so difficult for anybody to deal with all of that all at once and then yes and then your regular life okay so life in general is not easy right <laughs> uh, that's right that's right <laughs> then you're and then you and then to put the kidney disease and 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 then the people that have dialysis uh and other things insomnia all right all these things it's not an easy thing and so no. for so to to go through it and have some emotionally challenged moments, that is okay. It's, it's you know, okay. Because you know what? Um, as men, I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it, and I think you and I will both agree that as men, it is more difficult for men to open up and talk about their issues. It's yes. it's you it's more difficult. All right, I'm generalizing, I get it. There are gonna be some exceptions, but we need to just open it up, open it up and talk. All right. Because yes, yes. if we had more people talk about how they feel, then like we're doing right now. All right. We can have a whole community. Okay. A whole army of people. All right. That come together. And if you and I are talking about it, then, then and we have more people talk about it. Correct. People feel then people will start to feel less alone. That's correct. How you, how important is it to feel less alone, Robert, when you're going through such a big journey? Man, it is 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 uh very emotional. You know, when I when I was going through and you know, I just I just want to be left alone, you know, mm -hmm. in my room dark in the room you know it, it, it was a very trying time i was grateful for my kidney transplant you know and before then you know i was still having a hard time just accepting that i even had kidney disease mm -hmm. so you know and i you know i, I realized that you know god take take you through some things things happen for a reason yes and uh, yes he take me through these things for a reason, and that reason is to um, give back. You know, don't don't sit on don't sit on don't sit down on what I've been through. You know, like I said, when I was growing up, I was a you know very quiet guy. You know, I can talk around my friends, but you know, in church or uh, 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 stand up in class, I couldn't do none of that. But he he didn't, he gave me the voice that I can stand up and talk now, and I can get on here and talk. You know, he gave me the voice for that. So I'm just using I'm just using the tool that he, he's giving me. 
Amen to that. Um, gifts are given to us by God. Gifts. And it's up to us. Um, if you, you know, um, and, and especially from, you know, when God knows us better than anybody else and he gives us a gift, then if he knows us better than anybody else and he gives us a gift, then he knows that that gift is well suited for us. Right. Right. <laughs> he knows us. Right. Yeah, and if we don't use that gift that is well suited for us, then that's shame on us. And I, you know, and so, 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 so happy to hear that you're, that you're doing this because uh, it's, we can help so many people and I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to congratulate and I'm here to applaud you and, 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 thank you. and, thank you. and I know that, uh, I know for a fact that even though other people may be going through a very difficult time when mm -hmm. they hear your story, whether it's on TikTok or this video right now, they're going to get, they're going to get inspired. Listen to this right here. Look what, read this comment right here by Takia. Uh, you are a living testimony. Thank you, Takia. Thank you. How does that make you feel that, that someone would, would say that, something like this that makes you feel as though that what you're doing has given them encouragement or hope how does that make you feel if it, it makes me feel great because you know i do a lot of encouraging and a lot of time i need to be encouraged yeah we all do yeah so you know so that make me feel great you know because i i need it sometimes yes we do I need encouragement to keep going you know. uh-huh yeah this guy right here needs encouragement i do you know we all do yes, and yeah, you know do. uh because even though um it it feels good like i feel good right now with it, it it's gratifying and of hope because people need it they need it by they need it by um the truckload okay we need to be giving out right. more hope and there's so many people in need of hope. There are people that are are depressed. There are people that struggle with anxiety because of this mm -hmm. of their chronic illness. And right. if we can give them hope, and we can give them a, a way to to see the light. Then we need to do that. And and I'm preaching to the choir here because you're you acted on your inspiration. Okay. Um, right. you, you and I know that, or at least because of our efforts that when, when there is inspiration and when you feel inspired, there are people that do something. And then there are people that know, or have a feeling that they were inspired and it felt good, but right. they don't really act on it, you know? And, and I'm not, that's, I'm that's not true. here to judge people. I'm not here to judge anybody, but. The fact that you acted on the inspiration, okay, means that you do have you. You're a, a believer, and you've got a you've got a strong amount of faith. Yes, yes. Like I say, inspiration. You know, God gave me. He gave me these tools to use, and you know, sometimes you get tired, but you know, I know what I need. I, I know what I have to do. Yeah. You know, you know, I know what I, where I need to go. <laughs> I know what I need to say, and if I don't know what to say, sometimes I just go to him, and he'll give me the word to say. You know, Amen. Because you know what, um, there there are stories in the Bible that you know, even the great Moses, the great Moses who parted the Red Sea, he wasn't great at speech, and uh, right, his brother Aaron did this, did the talking, didn't he? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And so, yes. Yes. you know, God calls people even when they're not great at speech. So even if I, if I, if somehow I get, you know, I don't know, frustrated and maybe I, 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 I don't know, get tongue struck and I don't know what to say or I, I, I mutter right. or whatever, his mm -hmm. message will still go forward because he finds a way. Maybe I'd be able to travel one day and, and you know, and tell my story, you know. That would be wonderful. It would be wonderful, yes. you know. Um, for now, you know, 
we're going to get your message out there on TikTok. We're going to get it out there on YouTube. And the power of the internet can help us reach thousands upon thousands. Right, right. Um, so this wonderful comment right here, I want to spotlight. I love this. Thank you, Takia. Uh, you have a purpose and never give up. You never know who is watching you. So yes, that's, that's wonderful true. comment. Thank you. That's true. I so sure appreciate that. It is. It's it's gratifying to hear things like that because uh, again, uh, anybody who has been already inspired or encouraged by by Robert Ivy like I have, please drop a comment uh, and don't be stingy. Okay, when we're stingy and we don't share, that means that someone else isn't getting you know, fortified or edified spiritually. And so please share this message with somebody. All right. So, all right, my, I've got my, uh, my homeboy here, Shane Blanchard, a kidney transplant recipient from Midwest yeah. kidney warriors. Uh, Shane Blanchard says, keep moving forward and get it done. Get her done. All right. So it, yeah. Thank you, Shane. All right. So to, Takia saying, Robert, inbox me your address and I want to send you a copy of my book. All right. We're getting people connected in the kidney disease community. This is wonderful. I love this. Okay. She on, she on uh, Instagram? Yeah. Uh, she might be, but it looks like her Facebook logo is right here. So, um, okay. so she's okay, uh, most likely very available on Facebook. If you use Facebook Messenger, you might be able to get connected with her or at least uh, send her a Facebook uh, request, friend request. Okay, I sure will. Mm -hmm. All right. So, everyone, um, we want to be able to to reach as many people as possible, and we can do this together. Um, again, I want to kind of I want to recap what has happened. That Robert has named his foundation in memory and in tribute and in respect to his late mother, Roberta J. Ivy. So it's called right. Roberta J. Ivy Kidney Awareness Foundation. So right. I wanna, I wanna, let's just let that marinate for a second, okay? Not only, all right, has he started a foundation, acted on inspiration and started a foundation, which is inspiring, but He's named it after his mother. Okay. He's he's showing respect to his mother. And he's right. he's doing that because she endured so much as well as a kidney transplant, you know, a, a kidney disease warrior, a kidney disease patient herself, but named it after her and now is trying to get more awareness and, and share his story and his journey. So while, I'm, while I've said that, and I want that to sink in and marinate for folks that are maybe just tuning in, I want to be able to have you talk about what you'd like to do moving forward with your foundation and, and what kind of vision you have. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, I'm really trying to, um, find a support, a kidney support group. And I'm trying to start one here in Oxford, Mississippi. And I just want to go to, a, um, find one closer to me. I'll get online and find one and, you know, just bring awareness to, um, uh, my community. Okay. Okay. Uh, like I said, we have, um, uh, you know, a group for heart, you know, uh, heart support system, you know, but we don't have a kidney support system here in Oxford. So I just want to go in and learn more. And like I said, encourage people to um, get a checkup, you know, exercise, you know, um, we got to learn how to um, research things, you know, I'm researching every day and, you know, trying to gain wisdom and knowledge. And my main thing is to get people um, get a checkup. I like that. Yes, that's that's my main goal for them to get checked up, because, uh, like I said, I didn't know. I I went to the doctor for one thing, and and my sister did too. Went for one thing, and you know we found out that we had kidney disease then. So, 
you know, I, I want people to realize this is a silent killer. So, you know, maybe if we get a, a checkup and, you know, um, once a year, every mm -hmm. six months, you know, if they do find something early, maybe they can slow it down. So, right. Um, sooner the better. And we can slow it down. And yeah. we, it we have an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. It can, You're it can be right. a vegetarian. You know, uh, you know, like, like my family, you know, we try mm -hmm. to keep our kids checked. You know, we have to watch what we eat, you know, because high blood pressure, diabetes, they're the two leading causes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have many more, but high blood pressure and diabetes are two leading causes to kidney disease. So th those are definitely the two, two different topics that we, you know, want to be able to kind of uh, emphasize. You're right, because uh, those are the two big mm -hmm. ones that cause... Right. kidney disease and you know and, the, and and the thing about high blood pressure hypertension and diabetes is that the type two i should preface that if we can talk about those as the the two leaning causes with diabetes being number one and high blood pressure or hypertension a close number two is that those things can be minimized you know those are even though you're right is that like in my family High blood pressure is in my genes and my dad had it, my, you know, and, and it's in my genes. And so I take right. lisinopril and I take high blood pressure medicine. With that being said, um, I'm doing my best to reduce it and minimize it. Right. But right. what about the folks who don't know that it's in their genes? You know what I mean? And they don't get checked. And so what you're saying is very powerful is that if if they're not getting checked and they don't know, and then they don't know it's in their genes, then it, it could be that silent killer again. And that's kind of right. what you're saying, right? Right. Right. It, 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 it'll, it'll get worse by the time you find out, like I said, by the time my sister found out, you know, they was telling her that you need to get on there like right now, you know? Wow. Right. So, you know, that, that's why, that's why checkup was up. It's very important. It's you very know, important. I mean, you you can go through a, a a wellness check, you know, at work or something. You know, a lot of, a lot of ways people find out, and you know, they they might go and get a wellness check. You know, right? Mm hmm. Or their head might be hurting. Anything? Yeah. And, I mean, um. And, you know, and sometimes it's been, um, I've had, I've interviewed other people that have been on my show, Robert, and they've had some sort of accident, like a car accident or, mm -hmm. and they've gone to the emergency room because of their car accident. And then they're getting all checked out. And then they find out that they're, that they've, you know, that they have kidney disease because of their, they do like a, you know, they do some blood work or whatever. And so it, it does happen and you may not even know it. And so this is, again, so powerful that we're talking about this so that we can invite and encourage more people to get checked, um, to yeah. look and find out if they have high blood pressure, diabetes, of course, as well, and, and other things. But what yeah, I'm going to do you, is go ahead. You, you have to watch out for the pain medication, too. Yes, the NSAIDs, right? Right, right, right. You have to be very careful with those pain medication. Yes. So Nina, uh, thank you, Nina. She's a big, big ad, you know, a, a follower, and, a, and she's here in Utah, and, a, and she's got such a sweet personality. Um, she, um, I want to thank her again. She follow. She's been on my show. I had her on the Warriors Quest show last year in the month of may uh, she's a lupus warrior okay. and she uh she's saying right here thank you for all you're doing robert and your mom is so proud of you um you have truly inspired me i appreciate your strength and your caring heart and your soul you're a good man thank you nina that means so much to me that you said that thank you keep up the great work god bless you and your family that's awesome oh, wow thank you um mm -hmm. So thank you, Nina. Um, seriously, um, I wish you only 
health and wellness because this loose lupus warrior nina battles every day and she doesn't always have a good day but i hope that you have many many consecutive good days nina i wish that and with all my heart i hope that god gives you strength and that you have as many good days as possible nina Anyway, so what we're going to do, Robert, is at the end of my show, I always try to do the shout out part. Okay, so mm -hmm. here we go. All right. Here's a little picture of me right there. And I'm, I've got the shout out, you know, a little uh, comment section there. Um, what I'd like to do is, although we have focused on a lot of different things right now, right now is focusing on drawing attention to people you'd like to shout out, whether it's your wife, whether it's your sister, whether it's, you know, to your late mother, who would you like to shout out right now? I would like to shout out my mother, Roberta J. Ivey. I would like to shout out my kids, my wife, um, Jamelia Ivey, and my father, Robert Ivey. Awesome. And, and I like, and I like to give a shout out to you too, Jerry, because you, you know you gave me a platform. You let me use your platform to get on here to tell my story, and I, and I appreciate you. You just don't, you just don't know how much I appreciate this. Well, I, I, uh, I always want to be able to spotlight good people, and I, I can't say that I always. Um, I can't uh, always choose the right because I'm fallible just like the next guy. But um, the reason why I got inspired is because of my twin brother, his wife, as I mentioned offline when we were talking, um, she has kidney disease and I felt inspired to do more. And when I watched your TikTok video, you know, when, when we get inspired, you know, we can either choose to do something and, and act on inspiration. You know, faith is kind of curious that way, right? Uh, faith right, without right. works is dead, as we already know, right? Right. right. And when I when I felt inspired by your TikTok video, I, I, I just felt like I needed to reach out to you and, and, and try to connect with you. And I'm glad I did because um, I think that uh, you're doing a lot of good work. And so anybody who either hasn't already uh, found him found him on TikTok. I'm going to put his TikTok information up again. Find him on TikTok, but then right below his TikTok handle on this banner that I'm showing, I'm also showing the website for your foundation, Robert. Right, so, right. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So anybody who hasn't already found him on TikTok, you know, click on that follow button on this TikTok and then check out his foundation on his website here and and find out all of the good things about him because he's doing great work. And with that being said, um, I'm gonna put me um, on this different screen here so we can see each other a little better. Um, okay. I said, I said this offline um, and I'd like to also just publicly invite you that if you would like to become a co-host for me, um, you know, one, one month or another month or, or maybe later this year, any, anytime you'd like to co-host with me, similar to what we're doing right now, only when we, I have a different guest on, um, mm -hmm. you I'd like to give you an invite where you, uh, I'd be happy to, to have you come on and co-host with me and basically field questions and give your feedback to another guest who, you will be on my show and I'd love to have you back as a co-host. Okay. 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 I reach out to you and, and, and yeah. decide what uh, best time. Absolutely. Whenever, you know, whether it's next month, you know, three months from now, whenever, um, good people are, are hard to find. And I, and I, I think right, you're right, a good right. person and I'd be happy to have you co-host on another occasion if you'd like to. Yeah. We, we go out to, we go out to keep in touch. You know, all right. This is not the last stop. All right. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for coming on. And, and let's, uh, you know, again,
continue to share this message and we can do that offline. We can click the share button from the YouTube channel or wherever this is streaming live. I've got at least 15 other platforms that I'm streaming on right now. And so it's okay. going to be available as a replay later. And so thank you. May God bless you, your wife and your family on your endeavors with your foundation and everything. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. All right. Peace. Peace right. and blessings. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Robert is on TikTok. All right. TikTok um, has been a great place for me to find people who are either kidney transplant recipients or people who are on dialysis. And some of them aren't even on the transplant list because they're trying to get on the transplant list. So it's been a great way for me to get connected with people who are our kidney disease warriors. Shane Blanchard again. Thank you, my brother. TikTok is fun. And it's also a great way to get connected because they do things a little bit differently with their hashtags and they get people connected to each other who have like mindedness. And anyway, find him on TikTok, you know, go to his website. And if you haven't already, don't base Gen J. All right. Click on that share button. Nina's shared it. I know Shane has shared it. Um, Uncle Jim has shared this. Please share this. Not for me, but for Robert and anybody else who needs encouragement and hope. Please share this. All right. I'm going to say peace. I'm out. But, you know, I want to give a lot of mad respect for everybody who's watched tonight, for everybody who follows my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to you to the you home YouTube channel, and let's continue to share hope and, and encouragement. Okay. All right. Mad respect. All right. Thank you so much for everything. I'm going to find that outro. All right. Peace. Like LeBron, though, or like Bonzo Ooh, I'm a baller, yeah, shot caller, yeah They love me, you can't touch me, nah, can't trust me I'm too lucky Look at me, look at you, what you see, what you do Baby, please, think it through, drink it up, enjoy the view MVP, got my crew, Nike, on my shoes Might be sipping booze, slightly feeling loose If I want it, then I have it